we'll pretend to go out just until school is over. We're going to Dublin. Hi, Lola. Wow, you look so fashionable. Like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> wow, like I don't know if you came from like a ball or something, but uh... <laughs> no, just my bedroom. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I appreciate the effort. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> How are you? Where are you at currently? I'm currently in Belfast. Yeah. How are things out there? I mean, I think we're just like the rest of the world. We're trying to figure things out so that we get some sort of a semblance of a Christmas yeah well that would be nice too you know yeah. I mean the holidays are coming it doesn't even feel like it this year it's been so much craziness but I'm glad to see you're doing well and you're dressed fabulously so <laughs> and you have a movie coming out so there's some good things going on for yeah. sure <laughs> You know, I absolutely love this film. Seriously, like I, I, I couldn't uh, get my eyes away from it. Like I just had to like take in every second of it. Tell me what your re initial reaction was uh, when you first read the script and were presented with the character. Because I think you did, you both of you guys did such an honest job with these characters. Like they felt like real people in so many ways. And you don't always get that in a movie, but um, tell me kind of your initial reaction to it because I felt you made it your own I think me and Fiona have kind of always said that um sometimes a script will land on your desk and you're like oh I really want to do this mm -hmm. and this felt like it sort of came across the desk and I was like I need to do this like I have to do this um I was just sort of blown away by it from the get-go Dave is is an incredible writer director and you know upon first reading the script I saw the entire world and they were really three dimensional characters. Um, and I suppose I just felt immediately like I really had some convincing to do to let the team, you know, pick me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they did a heck of a job. I don't think you had to do a lot of convincing because I, I think you were absolutely perfect for this role. And the thing is of like, how much of yourself, like, could you relate to this character? Because it really seemed like you completely understood who she was and, and how to present her uh, in this way. But tell me how much, because uh, how much of it you actually understood, because it really seems like you were really in tune with her. Um, I sort of, I've spoken at length during the sort of UK and Irish release about how this film um, made me come to terms with my own sexuality. Um, mm -hmm. When, when we were shooting this, I'd sort of realized that I had given Amber um, and her journey and her sexuality all of this space and time. And I, I feel like I had ignored my own for a while. And, you know, this movie really transformed my life. And, and you know, I found the label queer. And um, I feel like it was a really transformative moment for me. So I think that, you know, she was definitely somebody that I understood. But I think that she made me understand myself more <laughs> wow that's fascinating to i mean i can only imagine now if you didn't do this movie how much different what in particular really while working on this movie that that personally affected you like what sort of things that you came to realization work on do you remember certain moments um that kind of led to that for you i think it was just realizing that you know um this character was coming to terms with how to be herself in the world and, and how to accept herself. And I just realized that I, that I hadn't done that. And that maybe, um, you know, I've talked at length about how sort of compulsory heterosexuality and, and things like that can, can affect you. And I think that um, sort of definitely in my later teen years, my early twenties, I was heavily affected by compulsory heterosexuality. And I think that, you know, I was so sad at the idea that Amber could be anything other than what she was meant to be. And I think that it just sort of made me realize that I didn't want that same fate. Yeah, it's unbelievable because it's like you see two different sides. She's like a rock for Eddie, even though she's going through it herself. But I, Eddie couldn't like literally live his life or be what he was meant to be without her. Uh, how cool was it kind of uh, for, for you to not only have your character that, that you related to so many ways, but also work along uh, alongside a character that's so afraid of the world and, and you know, uh, having kind of opening up their world helped 
helping them open up their world. Yeah, I think what was great was, you know, from from the get go, when we talked to Dave and, and Fiona and myself, all we saw uh, the central performance is one performance, and that is Eddie and Amber's relationship. Um, and, you know, one doesn't really exist without the other. And so we were definitely really in tune with each other's ideas and thoughts. And, you know, Eddie is somebody that's so confined by toxic masculinity and an artifice of masculinity. And, you know, comparing and contrasting and those two just chiming off each other only brings out the best in them. Um, and I was just so incredibly lucky to have Fionn by my side. <laughs> Tell me about that relationship between you and Fionn. Because I, I, I feel like you guys felt like actual, real, not only people, but these characters felt, but like real friends in actual life. I'm just kind of wondering, what was your relationship on set and off set? Because you guys were like glued together in so many ways. Uh, Fionn's my best friend. Um, we have been best friends since we met at the Chemistry Reads. And, you know, we had a lot of rehearsal time before the film and we sort of like Eddie and Amber fell platonically in love with each other. And so by the time we got to shooting, you know, it felt like going into work with my best friend every day. And you did another movie with him coming up too, Wolf. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Oh yeah. God, what are the odds of that? That's, that's awesome in itself. Yeah, we were, you know, it's so rare that you get to work with your best friend once, never mind twice. And, you know, we were like, maybe we can keep just convincing people to, you know, put us in films together. That would be great. <laughs> what are some, do you guys hang out together? Like, it, it, you know, obviously, what sort of things do you like to do? I'm so curious now that, that there's like actual real life <laughs> friendship off of this. We actually, we spent uh, the entirety of lockdown together. We, we quarantined for three and a half months in a in a little caravan in County Wicklow in Ireland. Wow. And we actually promoted the UK and Irish release of the film from there. <laughs> <laughs> How unique was that? Did you get tired of him after a while? <laughs> Do you know what? No, I, me and Fionn video call about eight times a day. Like I'll ring him and be like, I'm thinking of making like a sandwich for lunch. And he's like, could. And I'm like, that's all I wanted to say. Talk to you in a bit. <laughs> Uh, that's 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 awesome that you can like it's rare in life to form such close-knit friendships you know with someone that you can trust and and have it so genuine I mean I, I saw it on screen so I was like I will wonder like what it was in like real life but hearing about it, that's amazing that, that you can actually find a, a friend like that to to you know that understands you that well yeah I think like much like in the film um you know, so mates come in, in different shapes and forms. And I mm -hmm. totally believe that Addy and Amber are platonic soul mates. And, and that's definitely the way that I feel about Fionn. Wow. You know, I was really, I love the ending in so many ways too of this film because um, what she sacrificed for him, like, it, I guess it was all her earnings in a lot of ways or her savings that she just <laughs> got to, you know, <laughs> gives to him uh, to because it meant so much for, for her to, for him to find himself. But where did you kind of, uh, did you talk with Fionn about where did you guys see your characters maybe like a year from now, like after we kind of see him on that train and, and leaving, like where did you kind of envision their story would continue or go? Because I was kind of curious, like, oh, I want more. I want to see more. More. I want to see like what happens later we've actually talked about that in, at length and we also talked about that with with Dave you know mm -hmm. the idea of there being maybe something that happens 10 years down the line um with Eddie and Amber so I don't want to say too much maybe in case that happens but <laughs> I think that they're both happy and they're both out and and that's the most important thing <laughs> Yeah, no question. You know, another interesting point is like this movie, you know, it, it takes place in the 90s. Sometimes I felt like it was in the 80s or 70s, you know, <laughs> it seems behind in a lot of ways. But uh, I was always interested in the time frame of this movie, you know, because mid 90s was like 95, I think. It, it's not that far removed away. You know, I remember that age being a kid. Um, but did you ever kind of, did that resonate with you too, that the time frame that this movie takes place in? And it also seems Seem like it was even further in the past. Yeah, I think that, you know, we always say that 1990s Ireland was like 1980s or 70s anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty much. Um, yeah, definitely. And, and, but also, um, this is set in 1995 and it was only two years previous in Ireland that homosexuality was decriminalized. Wow. So, you know, in these kids' lifetimes, they didn't just feel like, you know, afraid of coming out for whatever reason, but, you know, they grew up in a time where they were criminals 
And, you know, I think that although we like to think we're really socially progressive, uh, I was on set filming Deep Number when um, they passed marriage equality in the north of Ireland where I'm from. Wow. And that's wow. 25 years after this film is set, you know? Yeah, that's that's telling in so many ways. I mean, you're living kind of the reality of what you're telling in a story. That's that's fascinating in itself, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I haven't been to Ireland. That's one of my bucket list spots. But you guys had some amazing locations. It seemed like a storybook, you know, when you're looking at the green kind of lands, and, and, you know, that you guys filmed this film. Tell me about some of the locations. Uh, were you familiar with them? Were these like areas you knew or kind of discover on your own? Because I, it, it looked really well how, how it was portrayed on film. We shot a lot of it in Dublin and Fionn and I were both living in Dublin at the time. So, you know, the Dublin sequence in the city centre, that was all shot in Dublin. Uh, the school was shot in Dublin. And then we were very lucky. We shot a lot of it where it was set in the Curra in Kildare. So all of that greenery is actually, you know, where the film is set. And then we got to shoot. Um, we were very lucky to be able to shoot um, on the military base in the Curra. Um, which is an active military base. And I think that actually the last thing to shoot there before us was maybe Braveheart. Oh, so wow. it was Braveheart and then us. <laughs> oh my God. You were saving the <laughs> saving the, the seat for you guys decades later. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool because we would sort of like be in our trailers and then, you know, we would go outside and have a tea or get something to eat and we would see the soldiers sort of playing hurling, which was incredible. <laughs> Wow, is it an active base? I mean, is there yeah. stuff? Oh, wow. So it's actually, you guys were kind of interrupting their day to day thing. Yeah. yeah, we would like be driving to sort of a location and they would be marching up the road. That's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, what did you take away from this whole experience? I mean, obviously, it would meant so much to you personally from where I can tell, but. When you kind of look back now that the film's complete, you get to talk about it. What are some moments that really stand out to you in, in particular about it that, that you learned or you really took away from this whole experience? I think there's just, there's so much, but I think more than anything, it's that, you know, films like these absolutely matter and representation matters and not just representation, but representing joy and, and hope. You know, sometimes queer film has a tendency to lean into darker themes. And those movies and films are so incredibly important. But for us, we really wanted to reflect joy and, and hope so that, you know, queer kids could see that when you come out, there's an entire community waiting for you and that, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I just loved how much honesty and, and you know, how real it seemed. Cause like these characters are flawed in so many ways and it's so many awkward moments and so many, I mean, it just, it's, it's funny for when you watch certain things, you know, uh, like how it happens, but it, it's, it's very much true to life. Cause you'd expect that life is awkward in itself and, and there's nothing's ever perfect. Things are messy and ugly and beautiful at the same time. I just, it was so fascinating how David made this. He was so in tune with, with kind of reality of humans, you know, and, and being in these situations. I thought it was just absolutely unbelievable how that kind of came off. Um, there's a lot of coming of age films, uh, especially I, we've been seeing over the last few years, but this one is a, we're, we're growing with these characters like in the moment. Yeah. Dave's incredible. I, I've said before, I would, I would work with Dave every day for the rest of my life. I think he's, a genius and you know we created a real sense of freedom on set and I think that the brilliant thing about Dave is that he understands that you know a lot of comedy comes from tragedy mm -hmm. and I think you know it's a, a very Irish sensibility that we we find humor in the darkness <laughs> but it's the darkness is real you know and you got to take humor <laughs> off of it because then it's just depressing if you just yeah. Don't do it that way. You know, I'm curious to know, uh, what are some, some of your hobbies and interests? What are some things you like to do in, in your everyday life? Uh, I mean, obviously you live in Ireland, so it's probably different than me here in the States, but what are some things you just enjoy to do uh, in your free time? Um, I, I enjoy loads of things. I like, I like painting and I, I really love writing and reading. And I've recently taken up embroidery to pass some time. Okay, uh, how's that going? I'm not going to say well. <laughs> but I'm just starting, so so hopefully it, it gets a bit better. Uh, so far, I've embroidered a single cactus. I'm proud of it. <laughs> well, that's that's a start right there. So, <laughs> but, 
it's, it's, it's fun to just like pick up some random things, even though you think you might be horrible at it or have no idea, but at least that, that whole process, you know, of discovery, whether you fail or not, at least you gave yeah. it a shot, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I mean, uh, if I ever get a chance, and hopefully we get to travel and things get back to normal, what are some things to check out in Dublin and Ireland? That's like a bucket list place to go. A bucket list in Ireland. Yeah. I say come up north and definitely do like the um, the north coast, the Antrim coast up towards Bally Castle. It's mm. absolutely gorgeous there. I love taking that drive. I took Fionn on it and and he he loved it. It's some beautiful scenery up here. I, I can see it in a film and it gives you, it's like a nice, like I said, postcard to, to check out and visit the place. I'm like, well, look at that. It, it's, it's beautiful. And it looks, it looks kind of, uh, you know, in, in a way it's like you're transported in time too. You know, it's like, we're so modern. I'm in Chicago. There's all these skyscrapers and high rises. I'm like, oh, this is like a beautiful countryside world that exists. We, we've got cities and high rises too. We just, yeah. we pick the best parts for our films and TV. <laughs> there you go. I like that in that sense too um like i said i love this film i i thought it was just so honest uh with the characters and, and you just can't help but like really like these people you know no matter what you root for them throughout and and you guys it's so cool to hear that you and fiona have a real like this actually is off screen as so much as it was on screen oh definitely he's my right arm <laughs> Well, you need that, you know, especially if you're right hand. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to Wolf. Anything you can mention about that movie? It's, it's like got a heck of a cast, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, we just had the best time shooting it. I mean, we shot it sort of during the pandemic and, oh, wow. and we ended up, we had to isolate in a hotel together. And, you know, that really sort of just made everybody bond. And, and you know, we got to spend a lot of time talking about the characters and rehearsing. And I think it's just, I think it's something that, hasn't been done yet and it's something that I certainly haven't come across so I'm excited to see what the fruits of it are. <laughs> well so am I. I'm looking to see you guys reteam and then this again that's just personally so cool to see. Any plans to come over stateside eventually or are you just like like sticking around in your home country? I mean I love Ireland. I'm definitely a home bird but you know when the world opens back up I think we've all got to take advantage and, and go see each other and hold each other tight. I think that's a really good way of putting it. Well, fantastic work, seriously. I'm a huge fan now. I'm like looking through all your films, trying to, to now check back and see what you've been in. I, I, I literally um, really, I love the story and the positivity of it and finding the, the joy and humor, you know, in, in that. And I'm sure, you know, there's someone out there that this movie is really going to impact. And 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 that's that's really important. When you can make a film that, someone can really, you know, change their lives as it kind of did for you, I, then you're doing powerful stuff at the end of the day. Well, Jeffrey, thank you so much, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, Loa. Thank you for taking the time. Stay safe and healthy. Say hi to Fion for me. I'm going to try to talk to him too, uh, but uh, tell him I love the, his performance too, and you guys were awesome. I will. Thank you so much for talking to me, pal. Absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your day. You thank too. You. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You know you can tell me anything and I will love you no matter what. I know.